Hey everyone, I'm James Bernard from Propellerhead Software. And what we're gonna do today is cover the process of creating a song from scratch in Reason. What I wanna do in this video is actually give you a little bit more confidence in experimenting. We're gonna cover some of the what ifs. What if I were to take something that I created and twist it in a new way? A lot of times you might come up with something very interesting, having a happy accent or so. But even if you don't, and you do something you don't like, you can always get back to where you were. So let's stretch out and cover a little bit of the what ifs. What I wanna do is we're gonna start with drums. So I'm gonna create a Kong drum designer. We're gonna select one of the factory patches here and I'm gonna go into where it says Kong kits and I'm gonna use the buyer like a bush. And we just select something from the first, and play it on our keyboard. Kinda cool. All right, I think that'll work for me. And I'm gonna change my tempo here, let's say to 140. I'm feeling kinda in a dubstep mood today, so we're gonna do a dubstep track. I'm gonna turn on click, do a pre-count of one bar, and just start recording. That'll work. All right, so I've got my hat and my kick and my snare here. And I'm just gonna look at the kick and snare track. And I can see that my snare is here. And what I wanna do is let's take one of these hits here and maybe scoot it forward or back a little bit. I'm gonna turn snap off and I'm just gonna nudge it slightly behind the beat. You know what, that didn't really work. So let's just undo it and let it be where it was. So while this is playing, I'm gonna now go in and look for another sound. And, and I don't really know what synth is gonna make the sound that I want. So I'm gonna actually go and use Create Instrument. And I'm gonna look in my Reason Factory sound bank and look in my instrument patches. And I want a bass sound. So I'll go to the bass. Probably want a synth bass. We'll just listen to some of the sounds that are here. Think that'll work? Now listening to this back, I may want to go in and start tweaking a little bit of this sound to sculpt it a little bit to what I want. Maybe I want to give it a little bit more resonance. Try a lot of resonance. Now, I don't like what I just did there, so let me just hit undo. Maybe I want a little bit of delay on this, so we'll turn on the delay. We'll take that Thor and let's run it through, I don't know, let's say screen distortion. Give it a little bit of fuzz. Let me go back here. I'm just gonna undo a bunch of times and hear what it sounds like without it. Kinda like it without it, so we'll keep it like that. All right, so my track's playing back, and um, you know, the snare that's here, it's cool, but I wanna try sampling a snare instead. I'm just using my internal mic on our laptop here, and it's already routed from that audio input to the sampling input. And I'm just gonna go to the pad and record a sample. So now, that works for me. Maybe I want to pitch it up a little bit. I want to try something else out on the bass. So it's a Thor that's making the bass sound, but I might want to try a different device and see if I can get a different tone. So while the track's playing back, I'm just going to go to my factory sound bank, and I'm not going to look in all instrument patches, but I'm going to try, say, Maelstrom patches. And what I'm hearing is actually the MIDI that I've recorded on the track triggering the sound that I select. Let's tweak that a bit. That's not really doing it for me, so let me just hit undo and get back to our Thor sound here. Sounds exactly as it did in the beginning. So, I mean, we have this ability to, while the track's still playing, completely change devices and not miss a beat. Program's not gonna crash on us and we can really try a bunch of things out and find the sound that works. So this one I think is the one I'm gonna stick with. And I think at this point we'll add in a lead track or some sort of a chord track.
All right, so I've got the sound, and what I want to do is process it through something. So I'm going to run it through the Maelstrom filter, maybe, or run it through the Wave Shaper on the Maelstrom and see what it sounds like. So we'll create a Maelstrom, and when I hold down the Shift key, when I create a device, it actually doesn't route it, so I'm free to make the connections in any way I want. So while this is playing back, I'm going to take the audio that was normally coming out of Thor, just disconnect it, and route that into, let's say, the audio input here into the shaper. And then I'm going to take the output of the Maelstrom and have that connected to my mixer. You know what, I don't want the shaper, but I do like the comb filter. And I want that comb filter to maybe open and close a little bit, so I'm going to use uh, Mod B and its filter. By turning the knob to the right, it's going to start changing this filter here. I'm going to change its rate so it's slow. So we get a little bit of a flange, something that's happening on the sound there. And that works out pretty well. Yeah, I like that. Let's add in our percussion loop. I'll go to my factory sound bank, look at some of the percussion loops that are in here, and I don't know, let's see what something from Prince Board might sound like. That might work. So let's hear what that sounds like with the track. Now if I listen to that track by itself, I want to give it a little bit more groove. So let's try regroove here. And we'll get something from, let's say, the MPC-60 folder. I think that'll work. And I kind of like that, because it's kind of given a nice little slightly human feel to something that was very sequenced and programmed. I want to try something different. Let's take this Maelstrom, where we were using Mod B to change the filter here. Mod A is not being used, so I'm going to use its output. And let's go to, I don't know, pitch. I don't know, let's see what that sounds like. You know what? I'm not really liking that. So let's just undo it. Yeah, that's better. All right, that's working for me now. All right, so what I want to do now is I'm going to take this lead sound and I want to record some automation, maybe open and close the filter a bit over the course of this eight bar phrase. And so as we can see here, there's my automation that got recorded. And if I decide that, you know, I didn't really like that first part, I only kind of liked where it started to open up towards the end there, we'll just keep that part. Well, in that short amount of time, we were able to take a song and create something from scratch. And we tried a bunch of stuff out. Some of it we liked, some of it we didn't. But most of all, we were having some fun. We were getting inspired by new sounds and new ways to tweak things. And that's really what you should be doing. Trying some new stuff out. Make mistakes. Have fun. Don't be afraid to mess something up, because you could always start over from a new song, or you could just hit undo and get back to where you were before. Thanks again, I'm James Bernard. Get out there, make some Reason songs, and have some fun.